everybody. Welcome to RGN, the regular guy news. I am your anchor, I am your host, Dan Black, and this is the least pretentious name in news. Uh, let's get into it, jerks. All right, <laughs> welcome to RGN, least pretentious name in news. This is the regular guy news hosted by a regular guy, a dude watching the news. I'm a news junkie, I'm watching this shit. I'm getting, I'm getting keyed up for this election, and I'm like, what the F is going on? What questions are they not answering me? For me, what is a waste of my time in this news cycle? What is the practical knowledge? Uh, and that's it. I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm diving deep to figure out what you need to know. That's all. That's what this is. Now remember, before this podcast moves on, remember this podcast is grassroots, Bernie Sanders style. Uh, make sure you uh, 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 give us five stars on the Apple Podcast algorithm, and uh, also tell a friend about this podcast and tell them to donate twenty seven dollars. Okay, uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, yeah, but no, uh, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, it matters, grab your grandma's iPhone, whatever you gotta do, uh, but yeah, thanks to all the awesome people giving us feedback on the podcast and uh, come on, taking this journey with us as we dive into the insane, never-ending news cycle. Um, okay, so uh, before we get into the topic of the day... Uh, which, I'll be honest, is Trump-related. The man dominates the news. What can I say? Um, I would like to uh, introduce uh, out in the field. Let's go out to the field. We have one RGN uh, news correspondent, Erin Finnerty. She's somewhere out in the field. Let's see where she's coming in uh, this week. Erin, let me see if I can connect with her from satellite. Erin? Dan. Erin, are you there? Erin Finnerty, out in the field. Dan, I am here. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Erin? Where are you Hello, broadcasting Dan. from this week? First and foremost, where are you? This week, I yeah. am broadcasting live via satellite from my apartment in Los Angeles, California, approximately one mile from your apartment. Okay, I had a feeling that's where you'd be. That seems to be where you always are, uh, even though you're a field I'm in correspondent. Deep cover here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm starting to think there's an, you know, an air of laziness or just pandemic paranoia, which both are valid. Uh, I cannot in my mind. confirm those things at this time, Dan. Well, pandemic paranoia and laziness are two of uh, they're two sides of the same coin for me. Many times I use the pandemic as an excuse mm. to not want to do anything, and it's a beautiful. Sy- <laughs> if there's anything to take away from 2020, it's the beautiful synergy between laziness and pandemics uh, really coming together. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not apply that laziness to voting. Everyone, get out there to vote. Hell no, you um, can be lazy and vote now in California, at least. Absolutely. Buy your jammies and roll yourself over to a ballot box. Yeah. Get yourself over to those fake ballot boxes that uh, the Proud <laughs> Boys are, are building. Right. They Baptist look like churches. <laughs> these, these, they got these, uh, uh, what you, I don't know, Aaron, if you saw this in the news, but the, uh, the, their pe- people are posting like fake ballot boxes, you know? Yeah, there's one But here they in Los look Angeles like fucking filing cabinets Baptist they bought church. from Staples. Yes. <laughs> they look like, like, in elementary school, you make like a Valentine's Day mailbox yeah. with uh, construction paper. Kind of looks like that. No, um, but, and uh, while we're on that topic, Aaron, thing. before we get into the mailbag, sure, I would like sure. to say that, um, it, it, you know, this is the regular guy news, you know, right? Mm-hmm. So we come at you from all the uh, from the streets. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't care how many times Biden says the word Scranton. OK, he's not living in the streets. OK, right. Um, but uh, in terms of mail or uh, uh, voting fraud, I just mm-hmm. would like to share a little uh, snippet from my life, um, okay. which is I got my ballots in the mail, mm-hmm. signed up for them. It was fairly easy in California. F- my wife filled out hers. I filled out mine. We signed them. I walked them over to the ballot drop-off box by the public library. Took Obviously, took a little picture because, you know, we got to have yeah. a photo op. It's not mailing unless it's documented on the uh. gram. Um, okay. But I just want to say, I also received a third ballot. Um, there's two of us in my household of eligible voting age. It was for my neighbor. They accidentally gave his, uh, ballot to, uh, you know, they put it in the wrong mailbox. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is really stopping me? I just want to, you know, not to help Trump or blah, 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 but maybe Aaron, maybe, you know, what is stopping me from just being like, yo, fuck, I got another ballot. I fill it out. 
Okay, all right, I sign it, which is probably a felony. Um, but I just drop it in the box along with my wife's, like, and mine. Like, what? What is stopping me? Uh, is there any protection in place for that situation? There is actually. So I wow. just read something. And, by the way, I did not tell Aaron to prepare for this or anything. I'm already prepared. Yeah. So uh, there's actually a thing where when your ballot is received, your signature is compared to the signature we have on file in the state of California with your driver's license or some other identification. So if your signature doesn't match, that could pose a problem. It could, you could get something in the mail, like an affidavit saying that you signed it. Um, yeah. So there are protections against. So they that actually sort of do call. look at all the signatures. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Is that time consuming? Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. but honestly, that that makes me a lot more comfortable because I'm actually, you know, it's crazy as much as no one. I'm max amount that you could distrust and hate Trump. Right. I'm at the max yeah. level, you know, while level also level. still having this love affair with him as well, which I can also mm -hmm. take a step back and recognize. You're a New York guy. Right, right, right. I always have like, you know, that, like I can't look away from him also. Mm -hmm. And that's the pro wrestling aspect of it. I can be self-aware that like. That like I on some level am will be sad when we have a boring ass Joe Biden presidency, but because right. uh, uh, it'll be less fun. But also I know it's for the good of the country <laughs> and blah blah blah. Right. So right. I would never ever take that into account. I'll just keep keep going to WrestleManias where I've seen Trump. You know he could just right. come back to WrestleMania where Facts. I can see him in ring. Hall of He's Famer. WWE Hall of Famer. Everyone knows that. Um, he's taken a stunner. <laughs> the president of the United States, by the way, has, I don't know if you know this, but has received a stone cold stunner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Facts. Okay. That's the craziest fact of all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, 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 but yeah, but so I'm saying, even with that, I, I started being like, yeah, maybe Trump, you know, I know he's crazy, but like maybe this mail-in's kind of cuckoo. Uh, and then, you no, but if they're checking yeah, they're the signatures, signatures and they're putting that like because it had a barcode on it. They're scanning mm -hmm. it. Then they look at your driver's license. Uh, like uh, that's a, that's a pretty high level of protection, right? Yeah. And also because I, I don't know this guy's I'm saying I don't know this guy's signature. It's just a guy who lives on my street. Right. And if you know anything about L.A., you don't know shit about your neighbors. I I also learned that. So say you receive your mail-in ballot and right. you send it in, but then you try to pull a fast one and you're like, I'm going to go cast a vote at a, my local vote center. Right. No, 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 no. Not possible. Because it's all electronic. Oh. They'll know, will know, poll workers like me will know that right. you've already cast your ballot. It shows that it's either been sent or that you turned it in. Um, oh, and if you yes. insisted on voting, you would do so as a provisional voter, and ultimately your vote would not be counted twice. Okay, Erin, mm -hmm. this is great information. I have good now, info. I've been doing my poll worker just... training this week. Erin, so. uh, ter terrific information. Mm -hmm. um, you've earned your stripes for the day. Oh, I thank uh, you. Uh, and, we're, and we're only five minutes in, but I just mm -hmm. want to say this. I watch a lot of news. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of news, mm -hmm. and this conversation we just had right here was more productive than any <laughs> conversation they've had about mail-in fraud on CNN, any of these places. Because all they say is like, "Look, it's not happening," right? Right. That's how disconnected they are from like the real common man over in these news outlets, where they're like, "Look, there's studies that say that uh, there, there's studies that say that uh, uh, uh you know uh." Uh, uh, that there's actual no mailing fraud, right? There's like, you know, and the FBI's looked into it, but like, they're not remembering that, like, even though Trump's a moron, he's been discrediting our institutions this whole time. Plus, Facebook, the 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 amount of mis and disinformation out mm -hmm. there is higher than ever, and you can't help but it creeps, it creeps in a little bit, and you right. start being a little cynical, even if you're not like me, like I'm not a conspiracy guy at all. You start being like, but am I a sucker? Like you start being, you know, and so right. they sh they need to have more layman's conversations about like, hey, they check this. Here's actually what they do. And there's an actual process in place. What you just said, as opposed to being like a study out of this out of a uh, fucking Kansas University said there's no actual mailing fraud right. because that ties directly into what we're going to talk about today, which is polling, which is like I, after this last election, I don't trust polling. So mm -hmm. they're almost tr they're almost like they're they're giving me news like we're in. Uh, a pre-2016 world where I have trust for when you talk to me about a study. 
or a poll. Right, right. right. So, Aaron, great job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. Happy to provide that inside intel. And, I mean, this is in California. I don't know specifically Los Angeles where I'm currently embedded right. with the regular guy news. But right, 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 right. In other parts of the country, I'm sure they're doing the same thing with mail-in ballots. Like, it's very, very clear and automated and, yeah. Yeah, but just because, from hearing that, mm-hmm. that little bit of information, I now well, like, believe that there's no works. significant fraud. Yeah, it's like, here's how it actually works, not just like, oh, there's a study that shows. I think if you know that there's a system in place and how the system works, it gives you a little more confidence in the whole process. Right. Now, um, I do this podcast every week, and I watch a lot of news, um, and I read a lot of articles because I don't have the attention span for full books. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, um, (laughs) imagine if... I probably one of the more informed people <laughs> and I don't know shit. You right, know what I mean? Right. And these channels are off their, th- these news outlets are off their rocker. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 but yeah, so uh, that, that gives me a lot more confidence in the vote. Cause I was like, I walked this guy's ballot and put it in his mailbox, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, Oh wow. I just, if that went to someone else, I guess. Oh, all right. All right, cool. Good. So there mm-hmm. are some, protections Checks in place balances, yeah. good to know but we'll get back into this topic as we move later on but before we do Aaron yes we yes. have a, a topic I'm looking on the zoom call right now I'm just seeing that my traps are getting pretty fucking big I think <laughs> I that's think the an RGN might be kicking it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Aaron are you seeing the progress do you see the weight in to the say, shoulders I've been embedded here for <laughs> eight to nine weeks and I've I have seen your traps progress in that time and yes. i well, applaud you on that mm. i'm now weighing over 200 pounds and i'm 5'8 wow. uh wow. <laughs> i don't know why i'm doing this just because this, this year is so crazy i'm just like might as well get huge all right yeah absolutely yes. it's all a right. great time to do it well it's my big casting plan it's gonna be when the world comes back they're gonna be like we need a funny jacked guy and i'll be like mm. it's like fucking highlander there's only one in Hollywood, it's, it's gonna Dan be, Black. It's going to be Dave <laughs> Batista. Um, oh, shit. There's another one. Damn it. John Cena, Chris, Pratt. Cena, Chris it. Pratt, Chris Evans, Chris Helmsworth, Dan Yeah, Black. but those are leading men. I'm, those are leading men. I want to be like, if it's a superhero, I want to be the be guy who like, guy. Who can like control fire, not just super strength. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What's like what's like a second rate power? It's like fire or like ice. Uh, yeah, ice. Yeah, I'd be the ice guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mr. Freeze, yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Or I'm like a guy who's just like a crocodile for no reason, you know, like Right, right, yeah. right. Like I communicate with reptiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah something like that. That's definitely second tier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or or I might be like an archer. You know what I mean? Ooh. I might be like a really good archer, Ooh. like a hawkeye. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. It's many people should think about this. All right. Okay. Um, uh, and I'm. I, I also want to let the the studios know. I'm willing to die in the first picture. I'd like to know that. I don't need to go yeah. on through the whole franchise. No. Okay. B- beggars can't be choosers here. All right. What does this podcast become? Aaron, we have the mailbag. This is the yes. news. Okay. Breaking this news. Is the news. Everybody, um, <laughs> check out the uh, uh, we have the uh, regular guy news at gmail.com. You can be interact with us. Uh, podcast, uh, a news outlet can be regular without hearing from the, the common man, mm-hmm. um, which is you. And uh, Aaron, we could we got some emails, we got some stuff with that. Any questions from the folks out there? Yeah, I finally recovered the mailbag servers after the epic crash yes. of two weeks ago when Absolutely. we had like 10. Um, so I've managed to recover our memory and all that. And this week, Dan, we have maybe one to two items in the mailbag. Okay. Can you believe it? I, can, I That's crazy. But that's crazy. for the record, we've been receiving more than that. It's just which we ones fit have, the episode. Exactly. Right. And we're trying to catch up. If you've written and we haven't gotten to ours, we have reviewed it. It's just not making it. Yeah. Air this don't week play down our I mean, popularity here. I mean, the mailbag is yeah. overflowing. Well, I mean, it crashed broke the regular guy server so absolutely a two email server i know it's very trim (laughs) all right so first up in the mailbag this week we have return mailbag guest pat f from commerce township michigan right right and michigan's very much in play right now so hearing from michigan is really important 
Yes. And in the interest of full disclosure, Pat F. may or may not be my dad. Okay. Well, that's okay. good to know. That's good to know. I just want to clear that up yeah, right that's away. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. Okay. Pat F. writes, Hello, Dan and Aaron. Listened to your last pod and have to say that undecided voters are people that want attention, especially when the choice is between a man accused of rape and molestation and has admitted it on tape and a man who is a seasoned senator and knows how Washington works and has felt the crushing pain of losing so many close family members. So if you can't decide between Joe and Don, you should not vote. Don't vote and then tell everyone you voted for the winner later. Also, since your ace reporter in the field is having a hard time getting to the world hotspots right now, have you thought about green screening to get her there a lot cheaper? Um, this is from Pat F. in Commerce Township, Michigan, where Trump's boys wanted to kill our great governor that is trying to save people from dying of COVID. Okay, I, I got a couple things to say. First off, Thank my you, heart's Pat out F. to uh, Michigan, um, which has now been liberated from the, from idiot militia members. Um, if we're talking about liberating the Michigan. The lowest of the low lowlifes. Uh, Jabron zone. Deep, Ugh. deep Jabron zone. But yeah. uh, I would like to say, shout out to Pat F. for um, <laughs> actually giving us a way funnier idea than what we've been doing, which is we should just say Aaron is somewhere. We can just add any background and put her anywhere in the world. You're correct. That's there, a lot. I mean, there would be one caveat to that, yeah. which would be that my MacBook and operating system is so old, it yeah. doesn't support virtual backgrounds, but oh, I can't yes. confirm or deny that. Well, I could just time. bail you a backdrop every week. Here's a... <laughs> We could pull the yeah, but Taj um, Mahal. Yeah. Okay. So look, I think he's uh, Pat F is responding directly to the last episode. If you haven't heard our last episode, I spoke to uh, Tim Vick, who was a undecided voter trying to pick his brain, especially in the most decided election it seems to be ever. Uh, how you, how you could be? I, I don't really understand how you could be undecided right now. You know, like right. I I get more how you could b vote for Trump than be undecided right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like that. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I was just reading a thing today where most people are set in st the major great majority of voters are set in stone for their picks. Right. And people are already voting. Uh, these debates yeah. are happening way later than normal. Um, and, you know, every the circumstances are so crazy right now that, like, you know, um, uh, the, everything's been pretty locked in, you know. So, mm -hmm. um uh yeah so yeah look i think what your dad is saying is that um maybe my dad possibly yeah i think pat f is saying that um he's saying if you're undecided you just shouldn't vote is that what he's saying yeah he's saying like what directly and i'm right and i'm trying to think if i agree or disagree i think if you're undecided you should vote for joe biden is what i should yes. say uh, <laughs> that's what i say if you listen to my podcast that's my official endorsement is i think if you're undecided that's I, I got the RG I, unofficial endorsement i co-sign that i would love to speak to more undecided voters um because when i spoke to tim the interesting thing about tim is he i felt like was agreeing with everything i said um, didn't really like everything I said really, and lives in Delaware, which is Joe, the state of Joe Biden. That's Joe Bidenville, yeah. Which, by the way, I'm a, an alumni of University of Delaware. Uh, oh. Joe Biden would is went to undergrad at uh, University of Delaware. What's the mascot there? Uh, Blue Hen. Um, uh, the Blue Hens, and um, I have no pride in that. Uh, that's where I went to school, but I don't have any like blue hen pride or anything. It was just a okay. fine. It was a fine place to go to school. I don't give a shit about that place. They call me to like give them money all the time, and you're like, I gave you all my money. You want more <laughs> money? I mean, I gave you. You guys gave me nothing. All right. Um, except for a good good time. But uh, yeah. So I think that uh, I, I don't really. Do, I don't even know what to say to Joe up to undecided voters. Even if you hear my interview with Tim. And your team, if you're listening to this, you know, thank you for doing the podcast. You definitely confused the shit out of me, man. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know how to respond to some of the stuff he was saying. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we, I would be trying to have a conversation that was more about the issues, and he would take it broader and kind of talk about the character of these, of of the like. It was more like, um, like a D and D like stat sheet. You know, it's like, well, he's got the dexterity. Tail and he's, of the you know, tape. He has a little tail of the tape mm -hmm. as opposed to, like, the tail of, like, 
I don't know, the re- of reality, you yeah. know, of like the fact that we're in this pandemic and somebody failed. But, you know, Tim, I hope I hope uh, you're feeling that I did I'll, one follow up is Tim messaged me a couple of times and seemed to be off put by Trump's Twitter storms. You know, yeah. Um, that'll do it. Yeah. But what? Uh, yeah. So I think Joe, vote, I think you got to vote for Joe Biden because I, th- I think, look, even if you're undecided, vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, but if you're undecided, the odds are there's a couple of versions of undecided. Undecided means you're like a deeply, I would say, let's put this into categories. You're a deeply conflicted individual, right, where you probably have some kind of like, let's let's just give you like benefit of the doubt, some kind of deep religious pulls, right, but you're wrestling with Trump's character. And then I could see you caught in between that where you're like, wow, I really feel like this mishandling of the pandemic is like flagrant and i should go to joe biden but i'm also extremely pro-life or something right 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 so then i and i see that now first off in that scenario you still vote for joe biden because because you're gonna get amy coney barrett on the supreme court there's three conservative supreme court picks that got him with trump you got you got what you needed in that way you you could still do the right thing and biden's a catholic and right? you more than likely live in a conservative state to begin with that has your laws in the books that would protect your pro-life stance. Right. Um, and then the other aspect of it is you're just really, like, uninformed and not paying close enough attention, not reading or seeing the right stuff, which means you've been given a lot of propaganda, really, honestly. Yeah, and you've yeah. given into the Trump deal maker, um, the Trump uh, – the, all the Trump rhetoric, you know, you're just seeing the surface stuff, which is like that, like we're winning, everything's going great, we got all the ventilators, like all, all, all just well, the surface shit, and then you're, you're kind of being that, duped. If you you're know? seeing that and you're undecided and it hasn't completely won you over to the Trump side, then read more and vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So good question by Pat F. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Many uh, thanks, uh, Pat. Um, a- a- anything else from the mailbag that we should? Oh, I just hitting. also wanted to say about undecided voters. I was reading a thing while I was brushing up for today's episode, and yeah. it said that one of the ways that Trump won in 2016 was that many undecided voters at, in the 11th hour flipped to Trump's side right. and ultimately voted for him. Yeah, but, and I'll cover some of that actually to the, yeah, later. But I in the don't episode, think but- it's. It's not looking like that's going like to happen this time. Also, it, it, more people are decided and more people in general are voting. So. Right. Um, okay, so next in the mailbag, we have uh, another return mailbag uh, guest, Sean W. Yeah, Sean wants it to you. Sean wants it to you. And Sean is writing, following up on a couple of episodes you did a few weeks back with a Trump voter. Uh, and I won't read the whole thing because Sean wrote twice and they're quite long with a lot of good points dan i'll send you the whole transcript to read yeah um but i'll just pull out some points here so sean writes subject most infuriating thing i've ever given two hours of my time to that's two hours plus if you listen to both that was me talking to a voter from tampa bay ross Grimaldi. Mm -hmm. yeah so Sean begins by saying that episode with the pro-Trump guy might have been the most prototypical Trump supporter there is. And in that regard, you got a good interview. But man, did he need his points to be refuted because platforming this stuff is dangerous. I don't think the vast majority of what was discussed are, quote, both sides issues. Biden's response to COVID-19 would have been better objectively because Obama left Trump a playbook on the pandemic that was predicted to come. Trump threw that playbook out and gutted the departments meant to respond to the pandemic. He effectively shot us in the leg before the race even started. That's not a both sides issue. Right. So Sean goes on to talk about how, Which, the by ace, the way, I just want to say yeah. that's that now that did come up. Kamala brought that up. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked that that's not like a bigger point in this. Like when, right. when pandemic first broke out uh, back in like February, March, whatever, mm-hmm. I was literally like, you know, the first thing you hear is that the pandemic response unit was like dismantled by by Trump. Um, and then you're like, wow, that's a losing blow. And it's not highlighted enough. Right. It's like this weird thing where like where like uh, Kamala brought it up during the debate. Pence shook his head. and was like, yeah, it's not true. But then we don't like litigate. And it's what's so frustrating to me and why I think I would destroy Trump in a debate is because we don't litigate these points 
hard enough. We like le- every time we get to something, they're not fact checked by the debater, by the moderator, mm-hmm. and they leave them in this like undecided space where it's like agree to disagree about pure fact. You know? Right. Well, and Trump was asked about it during a press conference once, and he was like, "I don't I know anything that. about that." Maybe he's like, "A Steve lot of people knows. work here. Somebody did that. I didn't yeah, do that. Maybe I remember Tony that." Tony knows about it. I don't know. Yeah. So Sean goes on to talk about a few other issues that came up during those episodes, um, the ACA, uh, having to dig up conspiracy theories or to throw doubt on Fauci or jump through logic hoops to justify being a Trump supporter just shows how unreachable Republican voters are. Um, Democrats yeah. and leftists need to stop trying to reach across the aisle. The divide is much too large. Focus so, on your uh, own base. Yeah. So, Aaron, that, that I think that's yeah. where we should. That's what I want to respond to. And then yeah. Sean goes on, and it was. Um, and Sean, we're reading what you write. We can't get to everything here. Yeah, he but, shares a lot of good posts about a lot about COVID, uh, facts about COVID, mask wearing, and other right. stuff like that. Uh, totally. And that's good. But I do want to say that the one thing that was consistent from you, all you guys listening to me talking to Trump voter and an undecided voter is every uh, not everyone, but a, a lot of you are like, there's, this is pointless. Why are you even talking to this guy? Um, it was a lot of, um, uh, they're just give, you'll never get through this person. They're just giving you the classic talking points and like the conversation's over. Fox everyone news. was like, wow. Uh, yeah. But I want to say this. I, n- I didn't have anybody except for you, Aaron, I think, who was like, I had to turn it off. Most people were like, oh, that was a rough two hours. I don't know how you did that. But people were sitting through it. Right. You guys were into it. So it's kind of interesting from this like split, you know, content creator standpoint and this person of mm-hmm. uh, me trying to reach across the aisle. Like, I, I, I agree with you in the sense of like, did I change anybody's mind? Mm, probably not. I do think I, – I actually will say that I do think with Tim, I pushed him closer to Biden if you listen. Mm-hmm. I really do think that, like, he is just not that plugged into politics, you know, right. honestly. Right. I think – and, like, he's – you know, like you said, he's a recovering addict. Mm-hmm. Um, he has four children, I believe. Um, so yeah, this is a busy fucking guy. He's had a really tough hit in the pandemic. He lost his income. It took him a long time, three months to get uh, for his first unemployment check. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, maybe I didn't do that, but maybe we're highlighting people's real stories here. Like, I guess my thing is that, like I said to Ross, even is that I do believe fundamentally we're all Americans and we're all entitled to disagree. Um, and which would be Joe Biden's point in a lot of his speeches. Right. Right. But, um, I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think there's ever going to be no point in speaking to people outside of your echo chamber. I just, I can't, I can't right. see that. I think I, I've that, always I been think, like that. Um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not like, I've always been like not infuriated that some, like, I, I'm definitely frustrated and I definitely feel anger, but I definitely don't get, there's a point that people hit like a Newman, um, mm-hmm. uh, who's like, you know, one of the hosts of, uh, uh, uh on cow, the wrestling podcast who like, he hits a point where he's like on fire fuming, you know, right, if he right. was a thermometer, the bubble broke, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Right, yeah. And I don't, I don't get there. I kind of just get to this place. I'm like, whoa, well, well, you know, and, and, and I think I've learned that from Howard Stern, who's like one of my idols who would have like KKK members on his show. Mm-hmm. And they always were made a fool of by him, uh, just letting them speak, you know, right? like to me. And I always think there was a benefit to that, me personally. So I guess I just disagree. Like, I don't think I'm necessarily like shifting votes, but like, what is your goal? Your goal is to like be in some protest, protest around those people and, and only be around those people. Like there is value to that being loud and, and organizing, mobilizing all the stuff that like, uh, killer Mike says, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I totally agree with that. But I think also speaking to, People that you, especially these, if you remember, these are people who listen to my wrestling podcast. So these are people who already, in some way, respect my voice and mm-hmm. my art. Let's put in quotes. Uh, and so they, uh, so uh, we already have a relationship in that way. So I just see a lot of value in it. I don't know. I think there is value in it. I think what Sean's point is, and probably what the people who message you about it is, is that the mentality of a prototypical Trump voter seems to be like impenetrable like you can bring up which you did like the Everything. facts and what's going on and the pandemic but it does not sway their opinion one way or the other so right i think that's what sean is saying is that it's 
but there there's, is a we point don't to hear from conversation, but voters like, that much. You can't get through to people in media. We don't hear from me- voters that much. Mm-hmm. So, like, you hear a lot from surrogates. Uh, you hear a lot from uh, 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 hosts, conservative, uh, conservative hosts. You hear a lot from politicians. Those people have inherent, um, you know, uh, 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 they have inherent biases based on where their food comes from. Right. You know, these people are just voters you know yeah cnn did an interesting thing i don't know if i brought this up last week but they talked to voters on the street in my home state of michigan yeah. as people were casting their mail-in ballots right and there was and they got their opinions they asked them you know they disclosed who they were voting for and gave their thoughts and there was more biden supporters than anything but they talked to a undecided voter who seemed like an idiot he was a doctor who said that this pandemic could not have gone differently no matter who was in office. Right. And there was a Trump supporter who basically said the same thing. So it is interesting to hear. Yeah. And, and uh, look, CNN does it sometimes. They did a thing where they went to Pennsylvania and they were speaking of Pennsylvania women voters mm. um, in a Trump county that and are mostly Biden people. Um, it, it, it you, you hear it sometimes, but ultimately, like, it's uh, uh, I don't know. I don't feel you hear like long form conversations with just a person like someone like Tim who was hit mm. really hard by this pandemic. His wallet uh, specifically, mm-hmm. he didn't get his his, his paycheck, uh, his unemployment check for three months and still is debating voting for Trump and still was feeling that Trump had a like a power to him. There was a magnetism to Trump that he was saying that like the wrestling and I kept calling it out as like wrestling thing. Uh, being like that's the pro wrestling element of Trump, where he's like, "Yo, but he like knows what he wants and demands it," and he saw kind of that leadership. And this is something that uh, I'm gonna save this for later on. But there was a comment he made that I did edit out because I just felt like I I I didn't feel that it added to the conversation. And I think and 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 my goal is not to like f- catch somebody in a slip up. But right. he said something that was very eye-opening to me um, that was uh, what I found to be a sexist comment, um, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that's my opinion on it. And I did cut it out of the interview, not to uh, – not to, just because I just felt like it was not – it just wasn't the point of it. And I think it was a throwaway line, and it was, it was more of a distraction from what we were really speaking about. But right. I do think that does tie into the 2016 election heavily. And I think that we will get – and I think that that's what we'll parlay over to the, today's Let's close topic, up the right? mailbag for this week. We, we close up the mailbag. And my question for this, uh, uh, for this episode, what I was looking into is, is Trump really losing? Okay? So, look, we all remember 2016. Everyone thought we're, – we're, I'm – this is, feels eerily like 2016 again where – Everyone is positive Biden is winning now. Everyone. Everyone's positive. Even if you turn on Fox News, they're talking like Biden is has won. And you know? Trump's not happy about that. Right. And so what I'm saying is that, like, I don't trust this shit at all based on what happened in 2016. I still remember that Javits Center, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, which was celebrated for Clinton. You can see Trump even had, like, a, when he won, he had, like, a small auditorium set up. Like, he was not yeah. expecting to win. No. Um, it blew his fucking mind. And 538 has, like, Nate Silver, his company. Um, he's, like, the king of polling. And he's the guy who's, like, oh, Hillary's 90% going to win or whatever, you know? Yeah. And so, and then he was wrong. So, look, I wanted to look into it. Now I hear them being, like, but this time's different. All the pundits, this time's different. This time's different. How is this different? How nervous should I be? Uh, this is where I'm at. So I looked into this. Okay, so first thing, and Aaron, I know you have some stuff as well. So mm-hmm. for, first thing is this, is, okay, well, I wanted to look in. First thing is, like, why 538 got it wrong, okay? Uh, that's So that's, that's the first place I looked in. Because actually, this you'll see. You'll see, but this conversation, my thing was that I was like, oh, I'm going to look into, like, how polling works this week. And then when I got into polling, it was not as interesting as um, what I, the real topic, which is that actually they didn't get it that wrong. Um, so 538, they got it wrong. One thing they didn't take into account with Trump is that Trump shook up 
how they do modern polling. Now, how do you do modern polling? Here's just a general overview of polling because you're like, where do they get these polls from? That's always my question. What is a poll? Where is the poll? Who's being polled? So basically what a poll is is it's emails and calls basically to specific demographics of voters. Um, And there's, you know, they try to have the the proper amount of sample size. um, And they take it. And it's not they don't just present that raw data to you. It's all weighted. So that's the interesting part of it is that it's weighted to be like, okay, uh, well, we can't just say this is what uh, uh, 50% of the people say they're voting for Trump and 50 say they're not. Because when it comes down to it, You have to think about all the biases in that data. And one of the things is that who's likely to tell you to answer a poll, right? Right, right. And that tends to be older people and uh, 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 more college-educated people are the people who will participate in polls. So that's weighted. So, like, literally, if if, – so let's say just on the simplest terms, if 70% of people say they're voting for Biden in a poll, they'll literally be like, all right, well, that's probably closer to 50%. Right. Right. Because of we're not accounting for that. Okay, so there's a lot of inherent biases in it. One of the inherent biases is uh, history of voting. Okay, and so Trump flipped all that on its fucking head in that last Mm -hmm. election. One of the main things is speaking of Michiganders um, is the blue wall. Okay, which is Michigan. <laughs> I don't remember what they are. The three Pennsylvania and oh, not Ohio. Virginia. Uh, fuck. There's the third. There's the third. Third state in the blue wall. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's in Maine. Blue wall states. Here. <sighs> Gotta Google this shit. This is the RGN regular guy news. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna remember what the blue wall is. I'm... Okay, so. God, Wisconsin. Sorry, oh, okay. Wisconsin. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Three blue wall states: Michigan, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Okay, uh, and those all went for Trump last time. Right. Okay, so those used to be that's more blue collar uh, union workers, and those used to be like you know, Aaron, like that's where yeah. you're from. Like those, mm-hmm. that's like hard blue areas, you know. Right. But everyone was like frustrated and was like hey let's just try trump out because he had no fucking record right and then the main thing is that what they didn't realize is that uneducated people were gonna vote for that's just to put it simply we're gonna vote for trump in droves yes well that's (laughs) his biggest demographic currently also is non-college educated white males right um and also women gave trump the election last time uh, white women gave Trump the election last time yeah. uh, because they kind of just voted. I don't know. It seems like with their husbands is not the maybe I'm just going with that assumption. That could be mm-hmm. wrong. But it felt like it was like, hey, this house is going to go Trump. Let's try him out. And right. I think a lot of the women that I saw interviewed on CNN were who were Trump voters liked. They literally were talking about how they like the fucking uh what was this show called apprentice the apprentice they liked you know? a tv show right yeah. yeah so it was more of a yeah so anyway well they're uh, like now like those same women are like a like a battleground for votes now right because those people are turning their backs on trump now now another part of the polling seems to be that popular vote is way easier to predict than sure. Electoral college, right. right? So actually, that's the interesting thing is that Hillary, they said Hillary would win the popular vote by 3.3%. She won it by like 2.5% or something. Right. So they actually were right. What they were wrong about is where the votes would be, you know, like, mm-hmm. or like, mm-hmm. uh, 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 you know, or, or, or the electoral count, you know? Yes. So um, no one was predicting that those three states would go. But 538 did actually were pretty close to a one in three odds that Trump would win. So they twenty they gave all right they gave Trump a twenty nine percent chance of winning. Okay, um, so uh, yeah, so yeah, and then he also said Trump, uh, Nate Silver said there's a one in ten chance that Trump would lose the popular vote and win an electoral college majority. 
which is, of course, well, what happened. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? So that's exactly what happened. So actually, to be honest, what he did, even though it was like, oh, it's wrong, was pretty fucking impressive, actually. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. um, I Defied think. Defied the odds. Right. So how does that apply to 2020? OK, so right now. Um, in Florida, Biden has a four point five point advantage. OK. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, uh. And that's an average polls from 538, which is a much better than a single poll, given that it smooths out particularly Biden or Trump friendly results. Uh, if the results were to hold Trump uh, would, were to hold, Trump would be nearly six points worse in the state that he did four years ago. So he mm-hmm. Trump's doing way uh, is doing even conservatively way worse in Florida than before than he did four years ago. OK. And by the way, when they poll, here's another thing. The question they ask you. When you poll yeah. is if you got a poll call, they uh-huh. say, if the election were held today, uh-huh. who would you vote for? That's right. the question. If that right. matters to you guys. OK, so. In North Carolina. Uh, so, OK, so Florida, right? OK, so in North Carolina, he's down by three, about three points, a shift over six points. And in Arizona, he trails by four an erosion of seven points relative to the results in 2016. Uh, in Nevada, he's down. He he actually lost Nevada last time. Uh, he's down seven points in a state he lost by two points. In Georgia, he's down a point in a state he won by five. Uh, uh, by five. That's an across the board drop of five to seven points. It mirrors his weakest positioned nationally, uh, where he lost the popular vote by two points in 2016 and now trails by ten votes. Okay, so at the moment, that's all to say. That the race nationally does not look good, uh, does not look like 2016. It looks more like 2008. And by the way, this is from Washington Post. When Barack Obama trounced uh, John McCain, mm-hmm. whose widow now endorses Biden, it's worth noting. Right. Um, cool. So it looks like he's, if you look at it, he's down. He's in way... Uh, From these polls, he's in way worse shape than he was before. And this is not looking like 2016. So, Mm -hmm. okay. So, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a good sign. Uh, You know, all we can do is trust this, even though, (laughs) whatever. Okay. So it says on election day that year, 538, I already told you this, gave 29% chance of winning. So that was a, of Trump to win. Okay. So 538 gave 29% chance. That was a better likelihood than was reflected by Trump in a number of other forecasts, though it still amounted to just under a one in three chance he would win. The site, uh, 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 Nate Silver wrote that there's a one in ten chance, which I told you that, that Trump would lose the popular vote and win an electoral college majority, which is, of course, what happened. Nonetheless, the idea that forecasters in general and Silver in particular were wildly wrong about the race has persisted as has persisted. Right. So that's yeah. kind of the thing is that like and, and that's persisted with me where I was like, oh, he just got it totally wrong. But actually what he did was pretty impressive, like I said. And he says and Trump himself tweeted over the weekend. He, he like he's he's saying, like, oh, they were wrong last time. So he's using that to his advantage. Right. Fake polls. Right. Um, and this is largely because people aren't very good at mentally differentiating between a 71 percent chance of winning and a 100 percent chance of winning. <laughs> right. This right. distinction probably going to win and going to win is not a distinction where many people excel (laughs) okay so this is literally all this to say is biden is in good shape but trump could still win he could win if there are errors in the polls though they would have to be more significant than errors in 2016 and he could still win if the polls shift to his advantage as they did in the late 2016 contents though this hasn't happened to any significant extent so far this year I mean, right. you know, that plays into like how everybody's minds are already made up. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that this is someone um, on Slate, their senior political writer wrote, Trump has never come anywhere close to catching Biden. His lead will vary, but he's never really come within breathing distance of catching Biden so far. So this is like over the course of time, it's never really been that narrow. It might go up and down, but. Right. So far. Um, and um, uh, so it says that he could win if he successfully consist- – so, so, yeah, he, here's what I want to go to. So here's actually so – I was like, oh, look at the polls, and we heard all this. It was pretty interesting. But really, the reality of the situation is if this election went 
barely, it looks like Biden is going to win, okay? <clears throat> Especially a couple factors that are not in the numbers here, but are just factors that I, I, I well, a couple factors that are fact, and one is just me inferring uh, RGN style. One is voter turnout is extremely high this time. Already, yeah. And that favors Biden. Because the people who are, it's the same thing as a fucking, in my mind, as a Yelp review. When mm -hmm. a restaurant is good, you don't jump to Yelp it. You jump to Yelp it when it's negative, yeah. right? And yeah. I think that's how voting is happening. I think it's more uh, people voting against Trump is if, by, if turnout goes up. Well, and voting's already happening. And as of today, this recording, like we've seen video of people waiting in line to vote. Now, those are like impassioned people. And stands to reason that those people want to change, that they wouldn't be waiting outside, uh, you know, for 12 hours to cast their vote, you know, if they didn't. Right. In, 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 right. And you could Georgia. see people in, in, in Virginia, there's huge lines, Georgia. people in masks, people are waiting to, to vote. They're fucking fired up. Their kids are at home. Right. And this yeah. pandemic response has been so flagrant that I really think the voter turnout's going to be huge. I, I, I actually think it's like, uh, I I I do personally believe that Biden's win is going to be so big that um, Trump's not going to have much to do. But he, he, he this gets to the next part of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. The other factor I just want to point out before we move on to that is I do think sexism sexism was huge at play in the 2016 election. Now that's incredibly that's it's almost like racism. It's hard to it's it's hard to quantify, mm -hmm. but. Based on my memory of conversations I had then, based on the me my experiences as, as someone living in this world, and based on a converse, my conversation that I had with uh, Tim, I'll be honest, something that he said, I think that sexism is a real thing, that people are worried about a woman at the helm of the country still like it's yeah. it, i'm just saying it it's hard to say it's hard i've always had female bosses i had my mom was very you know i had like a classic dominant jewish mother in the house <laughs> um i right. like i don't even understand that mentality personally uh not to like i'm actually not trying to like absolve myself from from sexism or whatever but i'm saying right. like is that like that doesn't even cross my mind that like a woman could not be the president like right. i it do, does not i really doesn't at this point you know um, and, but, it, it, and that's why another th reason that I think that people say, oh, why are you even reaching across the aisle? These are reminders of like, of, of the real conversations people are having, right? Like you can watch, you can watch, uh, people watch like Tucker Carlson or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And he'll present to you some very curated, sometimes valid arguments that are right wing pro -light right wing right he can find an example of how antifa is a real threat or blah 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 you know mm -hmm. the real th conversation is happening when you find out that his head writer is on racist subreddits right 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 yeah which is what happened like that's the real and that's what i want to see like i'm sick of the fucking bullshit like that's why i, I want to expose this what's going on here i like i prefer someone who's <laughs> straight up you know KKK robe than someone like Tucker Carlson who's pretending to be a patriot, right? Yeah. Um, and this is very – this is part of the reason the show The Boys is very good at this stuff, at this, like – at, at showing the, like, cloak and dagger, the smoke and mirrors of that whole thing. You know, like, show me – just – I can handle – like, let, let me see the real – let me see the real shit, you know? Right. Um – yeah. So anyway, uh, I think that. So like, he. I'm. I'll, uh, <laughs> I feel bad like throwing Tim under the bus, but like, I'm just saying he made this comment, and I think he had good intention. And to be honest, I didn't say it. I didn't give him. It's it's a little unfair because I didn't play his quote, but he was also quoting somebody else. But the point is, is that this was from someone in his orbit who said something to me that was, uh, like draconian logic. You know, yeah. but it's still real. So I think in that it's like we can look at all these numbers, but the fact that Biden is a white man that people know, right. I think is a huge fucking deal. And I think the DNC knew that. And that's why they were really pushing to get him in there.
because right. this is just the world we live in, you know? And it's also, but it's also smart that he has a female running mate too. Yeah, absolutely. But they're, they're, it's like easing show, people into it yeah, or whatever, it's right? It. So it's I'm the same like thing as Obama people. having Biden as, as his VP. Yes. Yeah. It's like, all right, guys, you know, this guy looks different. He's got a different name. He's got Hussein as his middle name, right? right. Um, but uh, don't worry because mm -hmm. if someone wants to kill him, we got just the classic white guy right behind right. him. Right, right, right. It just is – it just kind of – that's like the unspoken shit. Mm -hmm. And I think that polls don't – they do account for it because asking some of their bias there. But I do think – uh. I do think, and, and I'll say this, I think sexism actually um, is kind of getting buried as we go to move towards, like, racial issues and, and uh, religious issues. Because how much can we, how much can we handle as right, a society? Right, right. Do you know what I'm saying? But I do think it's a huge, huge issue. Uh, so, yeah, I do think Biden being a man is, is going to make this way closer. Yeah. I mean, for I don't know, Aaron. How do you yeah, feel? I I feel like I don't know any of them, but I can certainly imagine like a white male voter seeing Hillary and just set, thinking she's like a battle axe and like not the kind of person he'd want to spend time with or maybe trust. I don't know, but I'm right. just guessing. And then you have Uncle Joe, who is like you said, a white man who we know already. So there is a comfort level there. And I, you know, whether these like sexist kind of biases, they're probably, you know, un subconscious or whatever. But I do think that there is something to that. Yeah, and, and also I also think it's smart to have Kamala because like you said, it's like easing in like, look, we can have a very powerful woman in charge who may be the leader of the free world one day. And she's great. She's capable. Like, and she's here for you. All Americans. Right. But you'll have to like, this is her way of like, and and this is actually, to be honest, I do believe this is like, and I think, I think even Ross, the Trump voter, said this on here, which is why these conversations are useful, in my opinion, is he kind of said like, this is the way how they're sneaking Kamala in, who's the progressive, you know, blah blah blah, like you know, you, you know, you know, they say that because it's a more progressive candidate, but you're also like, I do think there are voters that are like, this is this is how they. The tr Joe Biden is the Trojan horse mm -hmm. for a female woman of color to get to the highest level of power, right. you know? So I do think that I do think that hurts. But I do think as the referendum on Trump, it eases people into that. And look, this is this summer because conversation sucks. It's crazy. Yes. But it just fucking it, we're looking at the uh, uh, all the polls here. But the, I really think like the thing that makes me feel remotely. <laughs> Sadly, at ease with these numbers is the fact that is is the fact that I'm like, well, this is not Hillary Clinton who I've seen people in my life close to me have a problem with who are not that political of people, and I'm right. kind of like, what's your problem with her? What? Yes, and well, you're a little was... bit like, I think subconsciously, I know what your problem with her is. Yeah. Well, uh, there were like in this slate article they point out that in 2016 there were people who both loathed donald trump and loathed hillary clinton and then right. held off making the vote and in the end they broke for trump so yeah those were the two least popular you know even yes. when it was happening two least popular candidates right uh, uh uh of all time you know is what they had exactly. said so um uh, uh uh so yeah that, that's another thing to keep in mind okay so aaron this all leads me to the same place, which is like, okay, so we can look at all the polling, but the real Biden is in good shape is the reality. It seems to be the reality, okay? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we don't fully know, but what I do think we can take into account is that he's in better shape than Hillary was at this point, and mm -hmm. Donald Trump's in worse shape. And yeah. he doesn't really have a great moment, especially because he dropped out of the debate this week, mm -hmm. and he is having his, like, as my friend – uh Pat Walsh put it on his podcast, uh, We'll See You in Hell podcast, I'll give him the uh, shout-out, is he said that Trump is in his third act of Scarface, which I think is the yes. perfect, like, yeah. him getting corona is like it's Scarface, man. It's like he's right. fucking doing all the coke and blow, and they're coming for him. Right. And, and it, except it's steroids. steroids. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh, I don't see people are not. You can't trick people with this COVID thing. Like this is no. the for yeah. So okay, so Biden's in good shape, but the thing with the thing with Trump is that what he's gonna do is he could win if he successfully convinces Americans that he did win. And manages to translate that into a termination of counting ballots. Uh, the mechanics of that are admittedly murky, depending either on compliant legislators or judges or grimmer scenarios involving interventions by Trump supporters as the votes being counted. So if you look what, look at Trump's Twitter or Trump's um, uh, campaign's Twitter, you know, like guys like, uh, what's that guy's name? I don't know, the, the fucking idiot's name. Uh, Corey Lewandowski, Lewandowski or whatever. Yeah. Um, like, look, look at, look at where these people are coming from. Right. They're all saying like, we just got good poll results, blah, blah, blah. They're right now positioning Trump to pretending like pretending like he's tightening the polls now. Right. So right. they're positioning it to look like it's 2016. And so that when it gets so w w on on election day, which now will have more mail in votes than ever before because of this pandemic, we'll have more mail in voting. So we change the process a little bit um, and not to mention all the voting suppressing that the Republicans are doing. They mm -hmm. both do it, but the Republicans do it worse in gerrymandering. They do it worse. It's just true. Yes. Um, <laughs> Trump is poised to claim victory before all the votes are counted and his supporters are already riled up he told the proud boys to stand by stand, stand back, back and, and stand, stand by. by we saw this militia that was planning in in michigan that was planning to kidnap uh right, governor, governor whitmer, whitmer right um if you think this is all gonna be i just want to prepare you guys the next 100 days are going to be fucking insane in this country okay <laughs> trump is going to claim victory because he might have a red wave earlier than the blue wave of voting so he's going to claim he won then they'll be voting ballots he's going to say the way we shouldn't be vote counting them it's already over they're going to be coming in tons of votes so like i don't know what i'm saying is this is I think it's worth getting COVID to fucking go to these ballots. Like, I don't, I, I hate yeah. to say it, but like, this is kind of a war, you know? And the reality is that like, if you live in a state where you can't, like I live in California where this is, let's, let's be real. This is like a blue fortress. You know what I mean? Like this yeah, is actually, to yeah. be honest, like what, if this civil war goes down, the capital of the blue army <laughs> is like, I'm Here. living in the base, yeah. you know? Right. <laughs> so like, so like, I'm ha I'm comfortable mail voting, but I'm telling you, if I've lived in Texas, you know, I'm going to the polls on the day of, you know, if yeah. I lived in Ohio, if I lived in Michigan, if I lived in Wisconsin, if I lived in Pennsylvania, I'm going to the polls with an N95 mask on, goggles, a face shield, and that's what I'm doing because I'm making sure my vote is 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 counted. You know. What about votes that are received early? So, like in California, I already received an email that my vote has been received and it will be counted. So, right. are early votes taken into account on election day? And that is what I was going to say is that in California. It's kind of crazy because you can actually check if you sent your mail that you could tell. Yeah, but they this, email you when it's, it's all state counted. by state. So I, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, I don't well, know, you but you know that states. voter suppression is going to be on as high as possible right. by the opposition in those states. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm like, I would go there and I would not wear any Biden Harris gear. Um, I can't really, you know, I would, I would, I can't really change my. Jewish face, they might, mm. they'll probably want to. Uh, Italian, contest, that's fine. That's my vote. Yeah, absolutely. If anything, I'd probably wear a MAGA hat, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like a USA cap, one of those. Yeah. You see, someone had a shirt that said, it's a, it's a, it had a hat that was a, the Make America Great hat, but it said, Major Look, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen that, but I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's first of all, the hat is not worth it to wear because nah. just I Oof. someone's wearing a red hat. Like I see it from like miles away. <laughs> you can't wipe that off, even yeah. if it's like a. He's ruined the red hat. Red Sox fan, yeah, forget it. <sighs> anyway, so mm -hmm. that so then he's gonna contest the votes, and 
again, the the Democrats have to be like, we have to win by such a huge margin, which is like, no, you need to win by one electoral vote. That's you know what I mean. That's yeah. or whatever. You need to win well, by only what one. About, what about on election well, night if there is no red wave and that the results are in favor of Biden? Like, uh, I, I don't, I just don't see how he has any ground to stand on and. One thing they keep saying on the news is like, okay, he's saying this election is a scam, that it's rigged. If it's yeah. rigged, it's yes or no. It's rigged if you win and if it's rigged, if you lose. But he is real. It's just like, it's rigged if I say it's rigged because I lost. You know what I mean? Like, right. Well, so Trump, yeah, right. So Trump is going to be like, he's not going to, he's happy to claim victory, but he's not going to claim defeat, you know? So right. um, it's going to be. So if on election night, but there's a clear Biden victory and it does go to these mail-in ballots, then now is he cool with mail-in ballots? Like, I don't know what the... There's a magic card called the Platinum Angel, I believe. Uh-huh. Okay. And the text of the Platinum Angel, it's a creature. It says, you cannot lose the game. That's mm-hmm. Trump. Like, right? He is the Platinum Angel. Um, right. I God, he would love that nickname. Uh, it's a beautiful nickname it's for gonna him. It's going to be trending soon. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you cannot... Um, and, uh, that's what, that's what he's saying. Like, yo, he's just gonna be, I, I'm not, allowed, I won't, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fucking vile. But the point is this, the point of this episode was just to, di- you know, we'll get into that as we get closer, but the mm-hmm. point of this episode was just to dissect, like, when they're like, Biden's winning, what the hell are they talking about? It's like, and right. why is this different to 2016? And it's looking like it is. Now, that's not an excuse to not vote. Go, make sure you vote, register to vote, make sure yes. everyone in your vice, if you are against this presidency, make sure that you vote. If you're for this presidency, make sure to not vote. Um, <laughs> I, t- right. uh, I promise you, <laughs> if we have regular candidates again, I won't say this, but in this yeah. election, it's time for this guy to go so that we can all get back. We can have a responsible science-based uh, response to this pandemic. You know, that's, yes. that's all I'm asking for. You know, right. I want to go to the movies again. I want to yes. go to Disneyland. Like, I want... Things to go back to. I'm an ArcLight member. I was about to be a gold ArcLight member. (laughs) I've been waiting. Hello. I all my points like. Yes. I bought a Um, Disneyland passport this year, like months before, like a month. I I know you got to ride that new Star Wars ride, which is crazy. Ass. I was group six, baby. Beginning of the day, (laughs) first to ride. And I can't go on it anymore. It's just sitting there. So look. Thanks, and let's put points into Fucker. perspective for you guys, because I don't really know exactly what points mean. It's just a way to quantify it, you know, so whatever. Mm-hmm. But in 2008, Democrats led by 5.4 points. OK, so that's when Obama won um, the first time. OK. In 2016, when Trump won, Hillary lost, Democrats led by 4.1 points and they still won the popular vote right now. Biden is leading by 9.6 points. So it's significant, you know? It is. He's doing well. Um, Not to mention, no modern Republican has won without Ohio, and Ohio is in play. Mm -hmm. So. And I think it's important to mention that Biden is leading by a lot, by like a mile when it comes to pandemic response Mm -hmm. in recent polls which is important because this pandemic is not getting any better. It could get worse, you know? So if, yeah. And, and, really and Biden and Trump, thing. they win on economy, which makes total sense. If you're a fiscal ser- conservative, you want to vote Republican. Trump rolls back regulations. He cuts, he cuts taxes for corporations. Mm-hmm. It doesn't ultimately help you, but I see where the perception that it helps everybody. You know what I mean? Um, right. I see that. I totally am down for that perception. But anyway, we'll see how this. We'll see how this debate. Let's. So I think we. I think we covered it all. And mm-hmm. next week we'll have way more to talk about. Um, um, uh, uh, and actually, I have an exciting announcement for next week. Okay. Um, but which is uh, well, I'll just say it right now, which is next week, Aaron and I will be moving the regular guy news podcast to two episodes a week through the election. <laughs> Yes. So um, we're bringing you extra coverage as this election heats up here yeah. on RGN. And you know what? Fuck it. We might even we might drop one in later this week. We might just start it now. You we'll find know. out. I haven't <laughs> talked to Erin about it, but I think she'll do it. Um, 
well, I am embedded here, so there's really nothing else to do in this camp. But yeah, so I'll as the ahead. topics come up, we'll be, I'll, 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 because I, to be honest, I didn't get to, I already have a whole episode of shit I want to talk about that I skipped because we were going longer, yeah. but about this Supreme Court nomination process that's going on, which right. is just truly so insane. Um, uh, I'll give you a little preview, which is why are her kids behind her? Why do you bring all your kids know, to your Supreme Court? Hearing? Hearing, I get the nomination. I get the confirmation. You bring your kids. This is like bringing your. Is it bringing your kids to work day? I mean, you bring every single one of your kids. All seven. They're supposed to be in fucking school right now. So that already tells me this woman's a little wacky. I gotta be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gotta, that's like yeah. my mom would. My I was never allowed to skip school, no. for nothing, no. for one of my parents' accomplishments. Never, and not even the accomplishment. Not even accomplishment. It's a this hearing. Is the hearing. And I can't help but think that the only reason you would do that is so people have to hold back uh, uh, right, what they say to you, right? So, yeah, could be. That one, the last guy, I don't think he had his kids there being asked right, about Kavanaugh? Uh, yeah, yeah, Kavanaugh, that's what I'm saying. Him and um, uh, his drinking buddies. <laughs> they were in the seats behind him. Oh, God, that was nuts. Anyway, uh, okay, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that later in the week. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot we more do. topics I want to talk about. I want to talk about... Uh, Something I have to say that's controversial, but it should not be. Uh, but we'll save that. We're gonna, let's commit to it. We're going to put on an episode. So what we're going to do for this podcast going forward is we're going to put out episodes. The main episode comes out on when, uh, Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. We record it on Tuesday. I drop it right when we're done with it. Um, and then we'll have a second episode on Friday. Friday's episode will be more mailbag focused. So yes. uh, you he send an email to regularguynews at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll go through because we're getting more. E e we joke about how small our server is, but we're getting more emails that we could respond to on the right. pod. And I think uh, going to this election, there's a lot of cool uh, points you guys are bringing up. So we'll we'll focus on that, and we'll have. Uh, uh, so yeah, we'll have two week. Um, all we ask for you for this extra content is um, give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and tell one friend about the podcast. Post about this podcast on social media, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that's all. That's all. Uh, that's all. That's all we ask from you at this point in time. So we'll drop another episode Friday. We're expanding our mailbag server, so write in yeah. to regularguynews at gmail dot com. And I'll be honest, it was free. Um, frankly, mm -hmm. we were paying money to have a server that only took two emails. That we're was, just regular I, guys. We don't yeah. know what we're doing. Anyway, Aaron, I feel like that'll do it. Yeah. So it looks like uh, is Biden really winning? The answer seems to be yes so far, but that's no reason to get uh, complacent. But Don't it is complacent. different Register than 2016. Vote. Vote. vote early. Make a plan. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Absolutely. And uh, Aaron, what's the website where people can register? I will too late vote. To it's I will vote dot com. I mean, today's the last day in certain states. So if you hear this, do it immediately. Like I think Wisconsin, some other important states like that. But I will vote dot com. Go there. Pick your state. Tells yeah. you the whole thing. And, and it's not too late to sign to be a poll worker either, folks. There's a big, like, pushback, I've noticed, on people mm -hmm. being like, like, people shouldn't tell you to vote. Like, fuck you. everyone, shut the fuck up. Like, it is complete. I get it's, like, funny to be like, do your job. Like, oh, you're a comedian. Tell a joke. Like, if someone tells you, if someone feels passionate about something, everyone is just a person. And from reminding you to vote, like, I... Some uh, I'll t I saw Marissa Tomei randomly saying have a voting plan, and that was the first time I heard the term voting plan. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? And then I realized I was like, you know what? She's right. I looked, and I wasn't signed up for a mail-in ballot. I was mm -hmm. registered, but I wasn't signed up because in California. And she reminded me. So you know what? I get it. It's fucking stupid when the celebrities sing like, imagine uh. all the like. That's disgusting because that's just like. That's Fuck kayfabe, you. right? That's just like all yeah. like pretending, blah blah blah. But if 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 if, if a celebrity hitting you with actual uh, useful information, they have big platforms. That's fine. Yeah. Yes. That's and it's fine. annoying when they don't. Like, there's a lot of people, like a lot of like Instagram influencers and stuff, who are radio silence on the issue of voting. And it's like this is 2020. Like, you know the country that we're living in, right? Like, you can't just be quiet about it. It's weirder if you don't talk about it. Yeah, that's all. I, 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 I'm just like, also, like, you don't have to tell people to vote, but if you want to, you know, that's, that's enough of this. Like, you know, celebs are so out of touch. Don't get me wrong. No one knows that. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I know that. I know that. 
I totally get that. But, like, it's okay to tell people, remind people to vote. And it's yeah. okay if, like, when they did that thing being like, hey, here's what a naked ballot is. Like, that was pretty interesting. I didn't right. know what that was, actually. Right. So, uh, essentially, that's just RGN shit. So, I made right. – I massively approve of that, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't approve of condescension or – uh, anything that falls into the like um, thoughts and prayers category, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't need any yeah. of that. So, all right, Pray everybody. For our country. <sighs> all right, that'll do it. We'll see you later <laughs> on right. this week, Thank Friday. Uh, uh, yep. uh, the pod will drop Friday. Make sure to get your emails into regularguynews at gmail dot com. By the way, they don't have to be questions. You could say you if you have something you adamantly want to disagree with me. By the way, the shorter the better, um, easier yeah. for the pod. But uh, everybody, thank you for stopping by, Aaron. Thank you for stopping by, everybody. Thank you for having me, Dan. Thank you for coming to the Regular Guy News. And as always, everybody, stay regular.